moving on to another example, say if I needed to find the shape of dichloromethane, so CH2Cl2, same as before, Lewis diagram goes down, count up the regions of electron density, I can see a single bond to an H, that's one region, single bond to another H, that's another one region, I can see a single bond to a Cl, that's another region, and I can see another single bond to a Cl, that's another one region, so for dichloromethane I can say that there are four regions of electron density around the central carbon atom, all of them are occupied by bonding pairs of electrons, and these bonding electrons should be placed in a way in which it gives maximum separation to minimize repulsion again. And when I do that, and I have to kind of think in 3D, the Lewis diagram makes you think that it's going to be flat with bond angles of 90 degrees. But when we think in 3D, we actually end up with a shape that looks more like this. And when we actually come along and try to measure those bond angles, it's about 109.5 degrees. And as for the name of this shape, it actually resembles a tetrahedron like you get in math. So we actually call this shape tetrahedral, not tetrahedron. In another example, let's say we had to work out the shape of a molecule like NH2Cl. So same as before, Lewis diagram goes down. I can see a single bond to an H, which is one region of electron density. I can see another single bond to an H, which is another region of electron density, a single bond to a Cl, which is another region of electron density, and I can see a lone pair on the central nitrogen atom, that's another region of electron density. So you could say that around the central nitrogen atom there are four regions of electron density, three of them are occupied by bonding electrons, one of them is occupied by a lone pair, all of these regions need to be placed around the central nitrogen atom in order to give a maximum separation so that you can minimize the repulsion between them. And when you do that, you do end up going back to that parent shape of something that looks a bit like a tetrahedron. But because the lone pairs contribute to the shape but don't actually get considered as being part of it, this means that overall you get a shape which looks more like a pyramid. And since it's got a triangular base, we actually describe this shape as being um, either trigonal pyramid or triangular pyramid. And the bond angles won't be 109.5 degrees anymore, it'll be a bit less than that. It'll be about approximately 107 degrees. In a last example, let's say we had to do the shape for water, H2O, same as before. Lewis diagram goes down, I can see a single bond to an H, that's one region, another single bond to an H, that's another region, and I can see two lone pairs, each lone pair counts as one region, so in total I can see four regions of electron density around the central oxygen atom, so I can describe that as being there are four regions of electron density around the central oxygen atom, two are occupied by bonding pairs of electrons, two are occupied by non-bonding pairs of electrons, and just like before, all four of these need to be placed um, around the central oxygen atom in a way that minimizes, sorry, minimizes repulsion by maximizing separation. And when I do that, I do end up coming back to my parent shape of tetrahedral, but because the lone pairs contribute to the shape but aren't considered as being part of it, that means my overall final shape ends up resembling something like this which you can describe as just being bent or V-shaped again. Good boy, good boy. What's over there, Toast? What's over there?